All right. Welcome everyone to Bible Mukbang. Um, yesterday we were on our walk, but today we got our turtles candy bar and our Arizona tea. Okay. And then we got the Mapalo in Jesus name shirt. Go check him out. He's a good guy. I like him. I watch him sometimes, not all the time, but you know. So, as I'm opening my candy bar here, the whole message for today is finding beauty in the ordinary things, right? It's something that's been on my mind for a long time. Uh, my mom has talked to me about it, you know, like, she asks, how can you find beauty in ordinary things? And, yeah, and so, it came to mind last night after the walk, um, my dad went and picked up pizza for me, and my nephew, and, um, I walk into the kitchen, and the kitchen is like this beautiful, beautiful orange hue, and it was just breathtaking. I think it's going to be the thumbnail for this video. So... How can you find the beauty in ordinary things? I know it's hard. I mean, for a long, long time, even after I was saved, it was quite hard to look at something so ordinary, like somebody's house, my house, the mountains. I, I mean, I've lived in Colorado for all of my life since I was born. And that's 17 years. And... Um, hold on. <sighs> and honestly, it's quite, it, it's quite difficult to accept beauty when you've grown up around beauty. I mean, everyone I've talked to on the internet is all like, oh, the mountains are so beautiful. You're so lucky to live there. And I go, they are? And I forget how good I have it living in Colorado. Yeah, everything's super expensive here. But I mean, right now, super expensive ev everywhere. So, how can you find beauty in ordinary things? Honestly, the short answer is to pray about it. If you're like me and you grew up around beauty, you probably take it for granted. If you don't, then... God bless you, It's that's perfect, right? But honestly, pray for it. I, I pray that I get to see the beauty in everyday life, just like how someone would if they first came to Colorado or first saw the ocean, right? Oh, I'm trying to think. Okay. The second way you can see beauty in ordinary things is just by waking up in the morning and thanking God for giving you these mundane things, right? Like giving you life. Everyone, and I mean everyone, takes the air we breathe, the, the life we are given for granted. I know I did for a point. And, um, recently, not like so recently, but recently I've realized that it's a privilege to be alive and every day is a blessing. That was yesterday's message, right? Every day is a blessing. Thank God for where you are. Doesn't matter where, but thank him for where you are. Right. And just thank God for things like the house you live in. If you still live with your parents, the house your parents have you living in. If uh, you live in Colorado or by the ocean or anywhere there's really stunning beauty that you've been desensitized to, thank God for that. Thank God. Even if you don't right now in the moment see it as beautiful, 
the best way to begin seeing mundane things as beautiful is to start saying they are beautiful, right? The sun that shines down upon us, that's illuminating this room right now, is a blessing. And it's beautiful. Without it, we would die, right? And thank God we do have it, because, again, life is a privilege. Your pets, right? They're not extraordinarily mundane, but almost everyone has a pet, right? So what makes your pet so special? Well, it's yours. It's what, what you love, right? And God gave that pet to you. And so really the whole message today is thank God even for the mundane things in life. Thank God when someone asks how your day was. Thank God when someone says bless you when you sneeze. I mean, literally stuff that is honestly that minuscule. Because the more you thank God about it, the more you begin to realize how beautiful everything really is around you, right? And But that's what I've, I've seen for myself, right? Thank God for giving me a girlfriend sweet enough to buy me one of my favorite candy bars, turtles. Mm. Oh my goodness. Mm. So yeah, look for the mundane. Look at sunsets. Look at them and say, wow, I'm glad I'm able to see this sunset in front of me. Because not many people have that opportunity, right? Thank God for everything, right? You stub your toe, thank God that you have a toe to stub, right? I was walking back with my nephew from the store today and uh, he's like, oh, we've been walking for so long and the ground's so hot that my shoes feel like they're burning and they're like burning my feet. And I go, well, thank God that you have feet to be burned. And he laughs and I laugh and that was that conversation. So... Thank God for the stuff that you have, right? You. So, one of my stories is that last year when I was working, I dropped a waterlogged treated plank on my middle finger, right? And it was black and blue, it was horrible, and you know, I have a new nail now, see, and, you know, in hindsight, I should have been thanking God, because I was, I was a new believer, I was about this close from saying my favorite curse word, right, <laughs> so, um, I smashed my finger, and in hindsight, I should have been, instead of thinking about, man, this hurts, right? I should have been saying, thank you, God, for giving me a finger to smash, you know? Thank you for giving me a house to live in. Thank you for giving me air to breathe, a, the sun to shine on me. Thank you for giving me life. I mean, if you think about it, all of the things that we have are just purely by God's grace alone, you know? the luxuries we have, especially in the United States and Canada. Especially in the United States and Canada, we have so many luxuries, regardless of the, um, the leaders, right? We have, sorry, we have so many luxuries like we have electricity that can be on all day. I personally don't leave my lights on all day. Um, same with my dad. My dad hates it 
if I leave a light on. And it's kind of rubbed up, rubbed off on me because my nephew, he's up here. And oh my goodness, he leaves the lights on all the time. Thank God I have a nephew to tell to turn the lights off. <laughs> so, no, we have so many luxuries. We have heat, we have cooling, we have a sun to keep us warm, to shine light on us, for the plants to grow that we eat, right? And I'm saying that just for everywhere, not just in the United States and Canada, but we have a lot of uncensored literature, right? China, uh, they're not even allowed to read the Bible in its original text. They're not allowed to. They have to write down the Bible they get from other countries uh, and write it down on little pieces of paper, and that's their Bible, right? The Bible, we get completely uncensored, right? Because that's, in the United States, our First Amendment, right? And we can read literature that opposes someone else's point of view, right? Someone in the world could look around and say, there's so much unkindness in the world. I don't believe in God, right? And we can read a book that they wrote about it. And then we can go over to someone else who says there's so much unkindness in the world, so much hate, there must be a God. Because how would I know that there is hate without love? Right? So just think on that. That's today's message. That see God in the ordinary. Pray that if you can't see him in the ordinary, or you can't see beauty in the ordinary, pray that you do, and he'll give it to you. Hopefully soon, I'll be getting the camera and microphone. And the videos will be better quality. You know. Let me tell you a little bit about myself as well. Myself. While I'm um, eating, I'm, oh, goodness. Mm. Yum. Mm, the caramel stuck on my teeth. Okay. I'm, I'm Lawson. Um, I'm 17 years old. Like you just found out, I lived in Colorado. And I know I shouldn't be spouting off where I live, but honestly, I don't care. The Lord, the Lord got my back. No weapon fashioned against me will prosper. Type of deal. You feel? Oh, that rhymed. Um, I've been a believer for just a little over a year, not like a month, a year and a month like a year and some change, like two weeks, right? Whenever the 19th of July was, that would be my one year mark. So whenever that was, um, I really like to read. I like to play video games. Um, I especially really like to read these comic books. They're called manga. And I was uh, talking with my mom about one of my favorites. It's called Berserk. Um, it's super dark, super, super bad, right? It's one of my favorites, though, because it, it, think of, oh, geez, how can I explain it in an appropriate way? It's, it's scary, almost, but it gives you hope, right? 
that love will prosper. And my mom asked me, Lawson, how, how do you deal with people saying, how can you read those books and believe in God? And I say, well, it's quite simple. One is fiction. Just because a book says something doesn't mean I'm going to believe it. Berserk is kind of like an agnostic book, kind of like how Vinland Saga is Christian oriented, right? Um, one is fiction, okay? I'm not going to believe what a, a book says in a fiction title is true, right? I'm not going to believe that 100%, right? They might have good philosophical ideas, but I'm not going to believe it, right? Unless it makes sense and like the Bible has evidence to back it up. I'm not going to get into that yet, but, and two, a lot of Berserk isn't all doom and gloom. A lot of it is, but a lot of it isn't at the same time. It really is a story about love and how love will always prosper. And I believe there's going to be a good ending to it. I hope to God that uh, the author of Berserk, um, who's dead right now, uh, that that God has grace on his soul and mercy on him, and that he, before he died, repented and believed in the gospel. I'm not sure if he did, but I hope to God that he did and that God has mercy on his soul, right? So... Yeah, there's a little bit about me. Uh, we're at the 17 minute mark. I wasn't trying to extend it. I was just, you know, letting you guys know who I am. Uh, going into my senior year. I turn 18 this October. Can't wait for someone to steal my identity. <laughs> okay. I'll see you guys.